Hey YouTube, what is up? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris Robbins, and today I'm actually going to do something that we've never done before on this channel and go back and do a part two for you guys. So, uh, not too long ago, actually, today, as of the time we're going to make this video, uh, we just got done watching some or breaking down some Maurice Hurst film. Uh, with Lucas Anderson. So, uh, shout out to him uh, for coming on the channel and uh, definitely go check out part one if you haven't already. Uh, so, a couple of things that I want to remind you guys about from what we saw in part one. Uh, and that was that he struggled a little bit versus Penn State, uh, but uh, he really had a really strong game versus Wisconsin. Uh, so, one of the common criticisms from the underground, I'll say, scouting community, uh, if you even want to call it that, uh, is that her seems to be a little bit inconsistent, or uh, as, as some would like to call him a, quote, sometimes player. Uh, and I, I can see from the Penn State tape why they might say that. Uh, however, from the Wisconsin tape, he was going hard every single play. So, what I decided to do for you guys is go a little bit deeper. Uh, and of course, I'm a Michigan fan myself. I live in the Great Lakes State. Uh, so, I got to see a lot of this kid. Uh, and I'm going to go back through and, and rewatch some of these games with you guys uh, and try and break down even more of this tape. So, uh, yeah, today uh, we have some more Maurice Hurst. <laughs> that was not intentional, by the way. Uh, and Let's see what happens. Is he a inconsistent, sometimes type of guy, or is he uh, really just used the wrong way and the pocket collapser, like I maintained and tried to attempt to prove in the last video? Uh, so let's just get right into this here. Uh, for those of you guys who did not see the last video, he is a fifth year senior, uh, technically a one year starter, although he played a lot last year as well. Uh, he's listed at 62280. He's probably a bit heavier than that. Uh, and he may be a little bit taller than that. He's, my guess is probably close to a 63290. Uh, and when he rushes in Indy. And the really main thing to note here in, in the background uh, if you guys want to pause and read through this or whatnot, go ahead. Uh, but the main thing is that he accepted the invitation to the Senior Bowl and he wasn't able to play due to not being medically cleared. Uh, so, yeah, with that, uh, let's just get right into what will be now our fourth piece of film, uh, and that will be, we'll start with the Maryland game. Uh, so, we got to see Mo first a little bit before midseason versus Penn State. Uh, now we're going to get to see him in midseason uh, prime of the year, uh, finally starting to gel for him. Uh, and especially with this Michigan unit, uh, only the only returning starter on this team was, in my opinion, the worst player last year, uh, and that was Mike McCray. Uh, so definitely took a little bit of time to gel, and we noticed that with the first three games, which is why I'm not pulling up the Florida tape. Um, but yeah, by this point in the season, uh, this game is about, I think it was the week before the Wisconsin game. Uh, so to give me an idea, like three, four weeks before the end of the year, uh, finally starting to, to gel and mold a little bit. And, and hopefully this will give us a little bit better of an idea, uh, similar to what we saw in Wisconsin uh, and what he can actually do. Uh, so we see him right here lined up at a, what looks to be almost a four tech. And right off the bat, he actually gets blown off the ball. So, not exactly a good start for Hurst. Uh, we, then that was one of the things that I really liked about him in the part one session, uh, is that he didn't really get pushed back at all. This particular play, again, he gets deep in the pocket. A little bit slow on the get off, though that might have been on purpose. Uh, he was supposed to follow around behind Devin. Uh, 
And let's see how that play ended up going here. Whoops. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Let's go back just a bit more. And you're going to see him right here. And it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like there's, yeah, there's three guys there. So he's getting triple teamed. Uh, definitely attracting attention. And uh, we brought that up point. We brought up that point before as well uh, in the part one edition. Not much of a pursuer guy. Uh, he doesn't really have the speed of a Taven Bryan. Uh, oh man, he was way false start. The center was. Yeah, he's not going to be like an uber athlete, like a like a Taven Bryan. He's not going to be like an uber size monster, like a Rita Vea. Uh, he's a little bit different of a player, uh, and I think that the way you Lucas put it, that his skill set doesn't really match his body size. I think that that could be appropriate uh, as well, and, and we went over that in the last part again as as well. Does a really nice job there getting off this block and making the tackle on 3rd and 16. Kinda got choked by the blocker on the screen. Oh man, they faked out that whole defense. You're lucky he dropped that. Find if it knows. And yeah, that's one thing that I really want to see more of from him is what I really do like him. He still does, of course, need a little bit of work with the, the technical side. Uh, and especially if you're going to be playing nose. It does a really nice job of getting off his block on that play. Um, but I definitely do need to see if he's going to be a pass rusher, more of a move set from him. Uh, and while we did see a spin move, and we did see a rip and swim move, respectively, as well, and another nice play getting off his block, uh, we saw three of the five moves uh, in the Wisconsin tape. Uh, we didn't really get to see a lot of polish from them. Uh, they were still really raw and needed some work, so maybe in this one we'll get to see a little bit more polish uh, in that area. Just anchoring there. And again, on that particular play here, while this might be a bad look for Hurst because he's not exactly collapsed in the pocket like you would expect from him, uh, ultimately it's not on him on this particular play. What he's trying to do, unfortunately, doesn't work. Uh, whoops. What he's trying to do here uh, is... Let's try 135. There we go. He's trying to get these interior linemen away from Chase Winovich here and away from Rashawn Gary here. If you can free up Chase Winovich for a one on one, and you can free up, or even better, just a, a pure run stop here. And if you can free up Rashawn Gary for a one on one, uh, you're definitely doing your job. And if you're freeing up Devin and McCray, to hold their gap uh, and play those gaps, uh, then you're winning that rep. Because it was a pass play, both of them dropped back in coverage. Man, that ball got off an explosion. And you see, that was the other thing too. Like, people like to call Hurst like a sometimes type of guy. Um, from what I'm seeing, at least in the explosion, bursting, and get-off area, uh, that does not seem to ring true whatsoever. Uh, it seems like more often than not, he is exploding off the ball. Uh, and in fact, actually, just so that we can get an even better idea, I'm going to turn it to 0.25 for a quick play here. And you'll see right there, he's already, this ball's just getting to the quarterback's hands, he's already a yard in. Uh, he definitely has that quick explosion and that get-off, and it needs to be very consistent. 
And by the time he's making that read option uh, on this particular play, this RPO, he's already a good one, two, three yards back. And you could even argue four because he has the leverage on the outside there. I mean, if you're a three tech, to me, that's a win. You might not have the inside leverage there, but that's on, on Chase to win this gap. And again, he's very clearly, in my opinion here, getting held. And maybe that's just a little bias in mind, but uh, definitely had an arm around his head. Speed. And we see it here again. You can see it in Haspi. He just explodes off the ball, shakes three blockers on that play, and he gets there. For a, what is that, seven yard loss? One, two, three, four, five. And yeah, he gets a seven yard loss as a result. So just one play after we saw. Oops, I'll back this up a little bit more just so we can go over this one more time. Just one play after we saw him uh, get that pressure on the quarterback. He's making a play seven yards deep in the backfield. Now here is a nose. He's able to shut that block. It's his responsibility to take the ball carrier. So what does he do? He makes the clear, easy wrap tackle. And again, look at what Mohurst is able to do on this play. That's fantastic. Fantastic for me. I love seeing this. Now watch this. Maryland has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine linemen on this play. He's able to attract the attention. Well, Chase has the outside guy here. Rashawn has the outside guy here. He's able to attract the attention of. Okay, that's three. Three offensive linemen. He is literally getting triple teamed. Which, what that does is that frees up Chase for the one-on-one, -on -one, Devin for the one-on-one, -on -one, and most importantly, Sean Gary, who is the Michigan's best exterior pass rusher, for a one-on-one -on -one with a tight end. All because Mohurst is commanding that triple team and attracting attention. Now again, are we expecting him to be able to beat a triple team and get pressure himself? No. That is not his role on this particular play. His role on this particular play is to hold his ground, not get forced back, uh, maybe play spy. He could be watching the quarterback. But really what you want him to do is you want Devin on that one-on-one -on -one and Rashawn on that one-on-one. -on -one. And if you can get Chase on the one-on-one, -on -one, even better. And that's exactly what happens here. Actually, no, that was four offensive linemen. So he was getting quadruple teamed on that play. Unbelievable, man. Now here, he's being used as more of a pocket collapser. Uh, and the way that you can tell that is watch the way that he's going to come off this blitz here. He's immediately rushing from a three-tech position into the center. Uh, so while it's a little bit more natural to just pull the guard here, uh, what his responsibility to do here is to get Monet uh, on the right guard and then Chase on the right tackler with the tight end. Uh, and then if he can get Devin or I believe that's Kalike, uh, maybe that's Hudson. Uh, but really just free up these gaps and if you can hold that interior uh, and you, you, what you want to see from him here is you want to see him anchor. And if he's moving behind the 32-yard line, then this is going to be a loss for first. However, right here, it's actually a pass play, so now you're looking for more of a collapse the pocket penetrator role, uh, and you really want to see him get that center force back into the pocket as much as possible. So you see him sw switch a little bit more power to speed here, uh, and he's able to get one, two, three, about four, maybe five yards back, depending on where you want to spot him.
Now here, he does exactly what he has to do. This is actually a very rare fail by Devin uh, on this particular play. Now what you're going to want to see here uh, from Hurst in Michigan's scheme is he's going to be rushing to the his right side this time. So you want to see Hurst on the right guard. Now Hurst is able to win to his left. Uh, you want to see him win to the interior so that Devin can hold that B gap where Sean has the edge. Uh, and then you're able to see Josh Metellus, the safety, take that uh, other A gap. Or the A gap here, rather. Uh, you have McCray to take that, Chase to take the there, and then uh, Kalik to take the edge. Now here what happens is, well maybe that was a bad play by Metellus, actually. Uh, Josh, Josh should have trusted Devin to hold that, uh, however, he just get, gets caught moving, the safety gets caught moving over here. So Wallace does exactly what he has to do on this particular play. He won to the inside. That's his goal. His goal is to force that running back to the edge. He does exactly what he's got to do. Now it's up to Devin to hold the gap. Didn't happen. Up to McCray to get off that block, which we'll see if that happens in a second. And unfortunately, the biggest error here is going to be on Josh Marcellus, the safety, who got caught moving over, trying to overcompensate for Devin, and he left the hole wide open. And unfortunately, McCray, of course, because he's not that good, gets big on the block, the running back here, somehow Bush, and that's the error on the play. So, again, while it may look like it's not the best play for Mohurst, Basically, on film, at least here, for our giving scheme, Michigan's, when I say R, I'm referring to Michigan scheme, he does exactly what he has to do here. He, that's a, a loss for him. While it's a loss for McCray, while it's a big loss for Metellus, uh, they definitely got caught out of position and not doing their jobs. Mohurst did exactly what he had to do. Lined up at 3 tech here. So here you want to see him ideally attract a double team. Um, unfortunately, that didn't really happen. Uh, what you're going for here is you want both the tackle and the guard to take Mohurst. So that you have Rashawn Gary free on the tight end. Uh, and either Devin or I want to say that's McCray. That might be Kalik though. Uh, and the... In this gap here, in case it's a room play, uh, it is a passing play. So yes, that is Kalik. You see Kalik shot back in coverage. Uh, you see Devin in coverage here, and however, you do see Hurst draw the attention away to free up for Sean Gary for a one-on-one -on -one with the tight end. Now, another thing I like about Wimo here is because he's able to free Rashawn up for the one-on-one -on -one with the tight end, which he wins ninety percent of the time especially versus Maryland, you see Hurst here turn his head. Uh, he knows that this play is cocked. I'll, I'll put it like that. Inappropriate, but I mean, you guys understand what I'm saying here. The quarterback is in his throwing motion. That's probably more appropriate way to state that. Uh, and what Hurst does play here. He's jumping for that. Granted, the, the quarterback way does this, so he has no chance. Uh, but he directly impacts the passing uh, on that snap. So again, another wing for Maurice Hurst. Now here, see, this is how you're probably going to see him used more in the NFL level. Uh, in most schemes. Now here, on this particular play, you're going to see Hurst as the main pass rusher. So on this particular play, it is now Hurst's job to win the one-on-one -on -one with the left guard and get direct pressure and ideally a sack on the cornerback. Uh, so it's not his job to free up... Win uh, I want to say that's Furbush, actually. It's not his job to free up Rashawn. Rashawn is coming on the side. Monet here is the attractor. Uh, you want to see Monet attract the double team. Actually, that might even be Solomon. 
uh, but you, what you're really looking for, we're watching Mohurst film, of course. Uh, you want to see Mohurst tear off that left guard and get an immediate interior penetration. So, what you're seeing here is he's already two yards in. And bam! Well, not exactly using a move, he beats the guard. Now, fortunately for him, or I mean, unfortunately for him rather, the center, I want to say, comes off of that and protects his side. So, we'll go back and watch again. I'm pretty sure 64. Yep, you're going to see 64, the center, come over. Now, that's where the responsibilities change a little bit. Ideally, in this day, Mohurst doesn't have to face the center, because you have Rashawn attracting the center here on the stunt. Um, the center doesn't recognize that Rashawn Gary is coming up the, up the middle. So the center here, unfortunately for Hurst, goes to take Hurst on the edge and ship him. Now that's not exactly a bad thing for for Michigan, because that means you have a, a free blitzing or Sean Gary coming right up the middle of the quarterback. However, uh, in this particular play, it does make Mohurst look a little bit worse than he actually is. This play, it, it's his responsibility to get to the quarterback. Uh, however, what you have to realize here is once he beats that center or that guard, and the center comes off of the stunt. You're a little bit different thing, and you see Rashawn get right there finishing the hit, which actually leads to an interception. So, if you want to look for a little bit of a positive from first here, you can do you can actually show you this play as a positive. He does exactly what he has to do from the original intention of the play call. The original intention of the play call is to have him on a one-on-one -on -one with the left guard and for him to beat the guard one-on-one -on -one and get into your pressure. Unfortunately, while he does beat the left guard, as you want to see here, the center comes over, which, because that center has to come over, you're freeing up a free-rushing Rashawn Gary right up the middle of your court. To get any reception on third and goal in the end zone. So while Mohurst didn't get the sack like you want to see, he didn't finish like you want to see. What he's able to do on that particular play, in fact, I think this actually is pretty close to a touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. I think he gets this to like 25. Yeah. So instead of giving up three points on this. Because that was third down, you're probably kicking the field goal from your 20. You're getting Michigan the ball at Maryland's 20. In part because Mo Hurst beat his assignment one on one as he was told to do, as was his responsibility, and freed up Rashawn Gary on a stone. Still another one on that up for Mo Hurst. Now, here again, look at what he's doing here. Ideally for Michigan, this play calls so that Rashawn is on the tackle, Mohurst is on the guard. You have Monet or Solomon extracting the double team with the center and the right guard at the one tack. And then you have Chase on the edge here with Bush and McCray as the gap, gap guys. Now again, unfortunately for Hurst, he has to kind of deal with the tackle uh, and to some extent the guard while he's moving over to Devin. So what this does is this leaves again a free Rashawn Gary. That's a no-go for Maryland. Of course Chase is able to win his side because Mooney does a great job of tracking the double team himself. That play is running exactly like Michigan on that right side. And then you have McCray there to, to pick up the garbage. Uh, so while not exactly a win for Mohurst individually, uh, because the play was not run at him, etc., he did nothing wrong. I'm not exactly sure you can count that as a loss either. Now here, this is probably the worst play so far for Maurice Hurst, and why that is is because he gets way too low on that center. Um, 
what you want to see him do here is you want to see him keep his balance and track that guard over. Uh, and he does attract the attention of the guard for a second. Unfortunately, because he gets so low and loses his leverage with the center, uh, he doesn't allow Rashad to get the win. Uh, so, as a result of that, Gary is forced to be double teamed, meaning you're lying on Kalik and Devin, and to some extent Tyree, uh, to play. Now again, of course they do, it's the Michigan's defense then, which is the first down pick next year. However, that's probably a play that you're not going to want to see at the NFL level. Now here, um, I'm actually going to back this up here again, see where we're at. Uh, looks like they play him at two. Now, originally, the purpose of this play is again to get either him or Monet on a double and free up Rashawn and Chase. Now, unfortunately, what happens here uh, is Monet gets singled, Hurst gets singled, and Gary gets the double. There's, you know, that's one guy. So, in this particular play, Mo doesn't do what you want to see him do. Uh, you want him holding that double team. Now, this is a negative on Hearst. Why? Because he doesn't adjust. As soon as he sees that he's getting single teamed and not double teamed like you're originally supposed to be off the line, you need to start attacking the passer. So, on this particular play, this is just a lack of adjustment here from and the lack of recognition on where, what he's supposed to be doing uh, and really doesn't do what you want to see hit, uh, him finish with. Right here, when he sees that left guard number 70 moving over to take Rashawn, right then and there, you need him pass rushing. You need him collapsing that pocket and you need him getting, getting that move. Um, while Monet does a nice job of doing that, recognizing he has the one-on-one, -on -one, and while Chase is doing a nice job bringing that option play, uh, you want to see Mo get further back into the pocket here if he's getting seen. Now, uh, at this point in the play, again, you're still seeing Hurst hold his anchor. He's not getting pushed back, so I, if you want to look for a positive on this play, then you can, you can find that with the, with the good anchor. Uh, however, what's going to happen here is Monet, the quarterback, takes a huge shot. That's uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's a seven or eight yard job for the quarterback. That is a huge shot back. Uh, and unfortunately, because of that, Monet is not able to get any pressure. So what happens? Chase has to get to the quarterback here, leaving Devin and McCray in a two on three with the running back on the screenplay. Now Chase doesn't get a shot of getting his hands up here. Fortunately for Michigan, the play works exactly as we want to. So what happens here, you have a one-on-one -on -one play, easy one for the offense, not really much you can do there. Nice job by Devin to come over sideline to sideline though. Now here, so what you want to see from him here is this is one of those uh, anchor plays. He, they're predicting run, uh, judging by the way that they're all aligning to the right side. And what you want here is you want Devin and Furbush in that 2 on 1 with the right guard. Uh, so you want Chase on the 1 on 1 with the tackle. You want, I believe, to be Rashad. No, Rashad's right here. Uh, you want Monet or Solomon, whatever DT they're starting, uh, at the 1 tech on the 1 on 1 with the left guard. You want Mohurst in a 1 on 1 with the center in a strong anchor position. Uh, and then you want Devin and Furbush being the right guard to get penetration along with, of course, Gary on the edge. So what happens here is exactly what Michigan draws up. You get the one-on-one -on -one with um, the edge here, the one-on-one -on -one with the edge here, the one-on-ones with uh, Hurst and the other tackle, and then you get Devin attracting the attention of the guard. Unfortunately, what Michigan doesn't see coming is the fullback on the block, taking out McCray. Oh no, McCray's up there, actually. Uh, taking out... who is that? Furbush. 
Fortunately, they won't run right into the, the pressure, so that was a really bad play at the end of the day. Um, it's just something to keep an eye out for. Now here, again, terrible, absolutely terrible play by Hurst. Now what his responsibility here to do is, is he needs to move that center, period. That center moving with him and that left guard taking him is priority number one. What you want to do here is you want him on a one-on-one -on -one and you want him on a one-on-one. -on -one. If you can get McCray either in coverage or on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with him, great. If not, then it's your responsibility to take that double team. Fortunately, Mo is only able to get single teamed here. So what you need to see here is you need to see him get past rush. Now granted, he does get really far back in the pocket. I would say one, two, three, four yards. If you want to be generous, five. However, again, that deep step by the Maryland quarterback about seven, eight yards deep. You're not really, really getting it off. Okay, really interesting play here. Uh, I'm not really a fan of what Don Brown was doing on, on this one. What I want to see Hurst do here is I want to see everyone just move up. I don't want to see, I know that this is a run play and that's the, the scheme always predicts run. But in this particular instance, when you have the, the pull, you want Gary to get upfield and, and take that guy, or at the very least, read that option. You want Furbush to get up here and collapse the pocket. You want Hurst to get up straight there and collapse the pocket. And then you want McCray coming on the blitz and just, I want to say Chase right there. Coming on the as well. Unfortunately, because Don Brown was doing something funky, and rushing everyone to the right side, Hurst ends up where he's supposed to be. Granted, I'd like to see him a little bit deeper, um, but his responsibility here is, is to be somewhere around right here. He's supposed to be farther off to the right side of the line. Same thing with, uh, I want to say, Furbush. Yeah, it's Furbush. So, again, while that might be where Mo originally was on the play, that's not where he's supposed to be. Next on Purba. And of course the linebackers. The linebackers really need to hold their gaps. Now here you see a little bit more of that, that straight rush from Mo Hurst. This is what you want in right situations. Now you see here, of course, uh, Monet here actually wins the double team, uh, and because of that, you see Hurst with the one on one. Now, because Hurst gets that one on one along with Rashawn and Chase, you want Chase getting forced. Well, uh, you want Chase as the force here pushing back. You want Mo as the interior pressure guy getting pushed back, and you want Gary as the edge setter getting pushed back. Now, because Mo gets that one on one with the guard as a tribute to Monet. Shout out to him on this play. He is able to win this snap. Now, unfortunately, he's not quick enough uh, to be able to get off that block. However, he does his job, forces him right back into Michael Cray, who actually makes a play for a change. Now, what do we see here? Again, that diagonal, diagonal rush. Now this time, it ends up working. Uh, this particular play, it ends up down ground here, this ends up working out well for Hurst. Now what we're going to see here is you're going to see Kalike there off the, as the force. You're going to want Gary as the edge setter on the tackle or the tight end. You're going to want to see Hurst get the guard and move him over. And then ideally you have uh, Devin, McCray, and, and Chase, and Solomon. Uh, yeah. Now, what happens here is Hurst actually attracts a double team. That's not the design of this play at all. Uh, 
Well, it works out well for Michigan, I would assume. Can we Gary is the free guy? Uh, originally, Gary is supposed to be uh, on 72, or most supposed to be on the one on one. Now, what's, what's crazy about that is this play actually works out surprisingly well for Michigan. Uh, Mo gets the attention to the right here. Oh man, she's going to hold that gap though, and McCray is going to be too slow. I already predicted that. Uh, however, from Mo's side, from Gary's side, everything on the left side of the line uh, for Michigan went well. First got penetration and one to his side, forced him to the outside here. Gary forced him to the opposite side, and Kalike forced it to be a run play. However, Chase couldn't get off his block. McCray is incredibly slow in the slam. And you're going to see a big time run. So, again, just another one of those instances. This isn't a sometimes play. This isn't a bad play or anything like that from Hurst at all. This is just a play where Hurst does what he's supposed to do. He wins, forces the, the lineman to the right side of the, the defensive line. And ideally, this is a run play to the left or up the middle. And oh man, that's where McCray run, went wrong right off the bat. He's already hesitant. Man. And yeah, I mean, he's in a great position right here. You know, so is Gary. So is Devin. Chase is the edge. It's really just. Really can't do crap. So, leaving that play on Hurst for doing exactly what he's supposed to do is not what we're doing here. Oh, we see Hurst right next to Devin Bush. And bam. Now, see here again, how, this is more how you're going to use him at the NFL level again. Uh, and I really like that this is more similar, like I was mentioning at the beginning of the video, uh, this is really what we're going for. Uh, definitely more what you want to see, similar to the Wisconsin tape. Now, what we're going to see here is he's going to, Devin Bush is going to attract that center. In fact, the center actually jumps false start. Um, but what this allows to happen is because Devin attracts the attention of the center here, you have one-on-ones across the line. One-on-one, 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 one-on-one. Now, because Hurst has that one-on-one -on, -one on third and three, bam, his shot right off the bat is to just get penetration, get deep in the pocket. So what happens? Bam, he destroys that offensive lineman, interior push, stops them right in the backfield. Loss. Unfortunately, he doesn't actually get the TFL. Uh, Solomon does, yeah. but that play is really on him. Now here, again, you want to see a little bit more penetration from him in that one-on-one -on -one situation. However, considering what the play ends up being, you get him on the guard, great. You want to see him get a little bit further in, uh, and ideally you see him attract this double or the very Chase to check the double. Alright, good. Chase did exactly what he was supposed to do here. So now, if this one comes through this gap, you want to see either Mo or Chase get off this block. Or since we're watching Mo, Mo, Mo. And the running back doesn't even try it. He just takes the side of the line, and Devin and, and uh, Levert actually are right there to finish that up. So again, we want to see a little bit more pressure, but he does his job and forces that run to the opposite side. A little bit wonky there. I don't really know what Don was trying to do. Let's see if we can figure this one out. Oops, not far enough back. So, Mo, for whatever reason, is trying to rush to the right side. I don't understand why, unless they're predicting keeper. Huh. But yeah, Chase is going right, Mo's going right, and of course you have Chase on the edge. Well, you have Rashad and Devin free, so something must have worked out right for Michigan. And 
Kalike have it too. So yeah, overall play for the defense. We're win for the defense. So I don't really know why Mo was off on that play. And bam! Oh man, look at what Mo Hurst is able to do on third and short. Key situation here, right? Third and one. Uh, Maryland really falling far behind. No momentum late in the third quarter, down by 28. Haven't put up any points in this game. Now watch what Mohurs is able to do, right? He just completely blows through that offensive line. Now granted, part of it, nice job by Devin to attract that attention there on the line. Uh, nice job by Monet to eat that double team, which is what allows Hurst to be in that in that penetration role. Uh, and then you see Chase get a little bit of push as well. Uh, but again, when Mo Hurst is able to get in a one-on-one -on -one situation, in, in situations where he is needed to rush the passer and, and collapse the pocket, about eight or nine times out of ten, you're going to see that happen. And in this particular play, he shows exactly what his ceiling is. So not only does he get insane immediate penetration and force a very hurt, very rushed read by the quarterback here. But if the quarterback decides to keep this, he's attracting the double team and frees up with Sean Gary, again, Michigan's playmaking ideal number one defender here, to make this play. Now, because the quarterback here is a smart pants, he hands the ball off. And what happens there? Mo Hurst forces him right into the defense, and bam. Now, if that's anyone other than Mike McCray, that's more likely than not a stop. Now, I don't know how anyone can look at this and say that Mo Hurst sometimes gets pressure. No. That play is all on number 9. In fact, I'll, block this, I'll back this up one more time here. Watch McCray on this play. Now watch what McCray does here, right? He is so slow to react to that. You have to be able to read that play and get to the outside and seal that edge. Now again, you see a little bit better of a play there by Sutter, uh, who is Chase Winovich. Uh, ideally, you want to see him get a little bit more penetration and get a little bit more in the pocket. But, I mean, what more can you really ask for from Mo? Not only did he force the hurry decision by the quarterback, not only did he free up Rashawn Gary by taking the double, he forced the run to the outside. Bam! Now see here, again, same thing. The same thing. And again, we talked about him being a sometimes player, right? Or an inconsistent. And all that, right? What does he do? At the line, he's facing three guys here. He's facing both the guard, the tackle, and the center. Now, the center realizes that there's a double team, so he eventually goes to move over. But what is up with them leaving Rashawn Gary free? Why? Because Mo Hurst is able to shed through that double team explode through that gap and force the outside handoff. Now granted again part of that is nicely done by Devin Bush to ensure that, the, that he's taking the block is there. Uh, however, again, just really forcing that outside handoff and because of that you're getting a short yard shot by Tyree Kino. Ugh, terrible play. Terrible play. What are you doing here, Don Brown? Okay, so let me just start off by saying why are you using Hurst and a stunt on third? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what Don Brown is thinking on this particular play. But what we're going to see here is we're going to see Devin is ideally the guy that gets this pressure, right? You want him to come through the middle on this on that stunt. There, and then you want him to come around the outside and, and get that pressure. And then you're ideally hoping for motor free gap. However, Maryland just completely shuts this down. He doesn't get to the outside at all. 
Mo isn't able to get around Devin because Devin is literally right there. Uh, he's so far back, and you're not really getting around that, and he just he's not able to get around. He's not able to get around, and because of that, he's not able to shoot through. Now, granted, nice shot by Rashawn to be able to force the hurry throw, but and oh my goodness, Watson, doing. Takes Tyree to come across and make that play. Ugh. Attracts the double team. Now here, this is a play where again might look bad for. Her. However, he does exactly what you want him to do here. He attracts that uh, tackle, guard center right guard. He attracts the right tackle here, and he again. Gets a Sean Gary on a tight end, one on one, and has Cody Hudson right there to shoot that gap. Now he does everything right. I mean, granted, he ideally wants to see him shut the double team, and we can get into all that. But for this particular play, he's a block eater. You, he, he does his job enough to be able to get a win for the defense. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, Sean isn't able to win the one on one with a tight end. And for some reason, they have Kalik and Devin and McCray all in man on the running back who's not running the route. <laughs> okay. Um, it's just really weird across the board. And you see McCray slow, can't do anything. Again, with the stun with Mo Hurst, I don't like that. You're, if you're using Hurst at the next level, you're not running a stunt with your 3-tech, period. Or your nose. Oh, man. Oh, they're still trying to run it right at him. Oh, my goodness. What a big play from Hurst. So, what you're going to see here, first off, right off the bat, is the explosion. Goal line stand inside the one-yard line. Bam! He's coming right at yo Bowie. Speed, strength, acceleration, ball gap, whatever you want to call it, man. He is right there from the snap. Just getting that penetration. Next, anchor. There is no way in. Hey, you are pushing him back, man. He is stuck. Finally, he gets not only pushing that guy inside, which forces the running back right into him, but he's able to up with that block and help make that tackle for loss. Bam! What a big time play by Hurst. Oh, terrible coverage breakdown. So let's see what happens on this play. Again, you're going to see... You're going to see him here, and he gets that ball get off. He gets that push. He's already two yards in the backfield, and the quarterback hasn't even started the RPO yet. Now he has the same spot. Now, in this case, if this is a run play, you want to see Mo Hurst get up, disengaged with that block and take number two. Because this is a run play, or a pass play rather, it's now his shot to get penetration. However, the play is at this point so far away. Not really much to expect. Uh, and a shot by whoever that is to come across and make that play. Goal line stand. Two plays because of hers. Attracts that double team very nicely. Nice play by uh, David Long, I believe. Bam, just shoots through. Oh, man, he's able to make the play because of it. Unreal. And uh, uh, look at this. How many times in a row have we seen this? Good play from Hurst. Good play from Hurst. Good play from Hurst. Good play. I mean, it, I think that there has probably been, through the first five and a half minutes of this game, probably one or two egregious plays by Hurst. So the fact that he's a...
Times player or inconsistent. Not really seen that at all. Tape. Now here, first off, your Shrexel Singer. Check. Win. Right off the start. Because that Singer here, uh, or rather the right guard you want on him, the right tackle you want on the edge. So all, all writing automatic win for Hurst. Next, this becomes a one-on-one -on -one situation here. Because he's ends up, he ends up pulling. <laughs> terrible play designed by Maryland and terrible blocking. Check. It shakes the one-on-one -on -one block exactly like you want him to. Finally, quarterback makes the wrong decision. Mohurst is right there. He suck it up for a tackle for loss. A little bit of help from Rashad, but he didn't need it. He was going down regardless. Stunt play again. Yeah, it's three of his four bad plays in this game have been on stunts. And there's another one. Except like, so that time he got a little bit more push. I don't know why Michigan ran so many stunts with more Hurst. That's not how you use him. You want him in a one gap role, ideally. Nice play by Devin on the outside. Great TFL from him. Linebacker winning 2019. And again, he does exactly, obviously, as a screen pass. Never mind, I can't really talk about it. I was about to say they really nice shot with Shane that block, but it was a screen. One on one, it checks the double. Ideally, you want to see him shut that there. Uh, that was one of the instances where he could have done a little bit better as a double team shutter. Uh, at the very least, you want to see him win this to the outside so that he can bend that edge. Uh, but yeah, as soon as he comes over, he needs to readjust and, and get in that double team from his side. Ooh, they actually got close to that. So again, from that game, we saw, I would say, four pretty bad plays, and three of those bad plays came because of stunts, and, and poor stunt calls. Now, I'm actually going to save that game for last, because it's the bowl game. Let's check out versus Michigan State. Now, a little bit earlier in the year here, we're talking week five, maybe week six, because the bye week, I don't remember when our bye week was. But what you're really going to look for here is Michigan State runs more of a pro-style offense. So ideally, we get to see Mo Hurst used like he was in Wisconsin and Maryland in a little bit more of a pro-style defense. Actually having a two-tack here. And bam, he tracks that double. You want to see him shut that there. Uh, although he does enough, I would say, uh, to get a win there, for sure. I'm going to adjust that quality. That does not look good. It says 720. I don't believe it. There we go. Leverage on that play is an issue. You want to see him be able to, to stay on his feet and anchor a little bit better. Uh, although that hasn't been an uh, issue with the first five tapes we've watched. So, oh man, Campbell just, just demolished Evan Bush. Double team again. Ideally, you want to see him shed that, and he does at the end. It takes him a little while, but he does end up shedding that double team. Uh, tripped on the turf, of course. Very rainy day. Uh, but at the very end there, he did shed that double team. I'd like to see him do it a little bit more quickly, but he did get the job done. And again, just BAM! 
absolutely what you want to see on this play. Right here, you see, uh, who was that? That freaking up. Again. Hard to tell. Uh, it might actually be your show. Anyway, regardless of who it was, uh, Mohurst gets the one on one here with number 70. And from that moment, one on one situation, all right, Mo, beat that guy one on one. It's your responsibility on short yard situations to beat your one on one man and get that stop. So, what does he do? He beats this guy one on one, gets that clear stop. Big time play. Takes that push, disengages from the block very nicely there, uh, and it does a great job of getting in on that tackle on the shuttle pass. Well done. Again with the stunt play, and this time it actually works. Granted, again, I don't know why I was doing it, and he did not take a good angle for the sack there. In fact, they actually backfired because <laughs> they forced him out of the pocket for a touchdown. But, uh, yeah. Don't ruin the stunts with Mulhurst on this story. Hard to tell there where, what he was doing. No, ideally this is a straight pen. Nope. You got him on the double. Okay. So on this one, obviously we saw McCray get free. So what we're going to see here is we're going to see Mo, Gary, and Chase rush left. David Lawn uh, off the edge. And Mike McCray, shout out to Mo and Chase for checking the double teams here. Uh, you get want to see McCray get that pressure, or Long get that pressure. Ideally, Long checks the running back, uh, which is what happens. And McCray gets the pressure, bad throw. Well done. Okay, this time there's the underman on the stunt. Not really sure how I feel about that either. Play was away from him, you know, but he still did a nice job of finishing that blocker off. Okay. So while he doesn't, of course, get any pressure from this gun look here, he is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 to 10 yards back. Mo is still about 3 yards there, and with a double team. Uh, unfortunately, everyone else ends up in single teams, just to create MSU. And it doesn't work out at all for him anyway. Getting quadruple teamed on that play. Second time he's had four blockers on him at once. Now see there he tried to shed the double team but lost his leverage. Um, Ideally, in this situation, what you want to see him do is you want to see him stay on his feet here uh, and really attack that gap. Uh, while he attacks that gap, he just doesn't stay on his feet, resulting in first down. So just balance, keeping his leverage, uh, those types of things, readjusting your body position. Same thing there. Of course, the play was to the outside anyway, so not like you could have made any difference whatsoever at all. Still TFL too for Chase.
checks the double team nicely. Really quick release there by Lewerke. Didn't really have a chance to pressure. That release was quick in slow mo, it was definitely quick in regular mo. Same thing there, Lewerke with these really nice quick releases. Good for him. Now there, big, 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 big fail. That's probably the worst play I've seen Mohurst make on three of these five games. What in the world was he doing? Play right here. You want him there? Done. Anchor. Keep your base. Let McCray take that gap. Let uh, Watson. No, Watson's twenty-eight. I want to say, I know LeVert's 22, so that must be long. Uh, make him make that play. Make Devin keep that gap. The other defensive linemen around you are just fine. Just hold your anchor and hold your gap. Now, what happens is he's not able to do that. He takes the wrong gap. He takes the gap between the guard and the center, the A gap. Now, because of that, that leaves McCray in charge of the B-gap, along with Rashawn. Not where they're supposed to be. Because that's not where they're supposed to be, they're at a disadvantage. McCray, not really big fan of him from the beginning, but he's not really supposed to be engaged with the blocker on this play. Ideally, Mo Hurst is right is where McCray, ideally, where Mo Hurst is, right now is or where Mike McCray is right now is where Mo Hurst is supposed to be. That's what I was trying to go with that. Uh, Mo should be over here on the left side of this line. Gary, on the other hand, should be more of an edge setter. He needs to he shouldn't even really be a punisher on this play. That should be up to McCray. Because of that, running back able to slip through the crack. Easy because Mo gets pushed out of his gap. Easy. 428, which I believe results in a touchdown. Or at least a very, very long run. So, just like Lucas was saying yesterday, uh, getting pushed out of his gap. On that particular play, uh, issue. Not really sure what he was doing on that play either. I, obviously, he's the pass rusher. Get it off right here. He's already engaged the lineman, and the other three guys haven't even started their jump yet. That's insane. Get off. Because that is able to attract a double, which should leave Rashawn as the free edge guy here for this. Rashawn plays the run. Oh, that's probably hands to the face on Machine State's lineman. Nice play by Levert, or not Levert by Long. Getting great jump there by Hurst. And look how far back he is. Let's back that up a little bit more here. We're going to see him start here at the 27, or the 33, rather. By the time he, he's not even started the handoff yet, he's already two yards deep. The quarterback's four. Right? Here, he's already one, two, three. He's already four yards deep. Run play is five, six, seven, eight. By the time that that play is is handed off, he is one. We'll be generous and say that that's just one, two, three, four, five, and he has leverage. So he has almost six yards deep plus leverage. Forces the ring about the obviously. Right into Mike McRae, who even he can't, well, he almost did, missed the tackle. 
Yeah, again, that player is just so far away from Bo. And I, that's where you see the sometimes factor come in. Is on these types of plays, when the quarterback is on the other half of the field here, and about one, two, three, four, five, six yards away from him, and on the other side of the field, you're not going to see Mo Hurst try and win this snap. So on those types of plays, yeah, you're not seeing him win. Though, I mean, really, what do you expect from the guy that's not fast at all, period? He's not going to be able to make a play on that regardless. Bam, just shakes that block. Oh, he missed it. Alright, so what went right and what went wrong? What went right? Bam, right off the snap. Boom, he actually fooled him. Nice shot by Chase, or not Chase, by Furbush. Fools him, attracts the attention of the center just long enough to get Mo on one-on-one -on -one where he's able to win inside leverage. Because of that, he's actually kind of getting held there, which may be responsible for his lost, uh, his missed tackle. Great play by Rashawn uh, to get as deep as he is. Great play by Furbush, again, to be in his proper position. And good play by Devin to being in your aggressive uh, position here. Now, what happens to Hurst is he just loses his anchor here. Uh, and gets really pushed out. Yeah, so you do want to see him better a little bit. Um, but again, from the snap to the tackle, uh, he does everything right. And then it's just the tackle that he misses. Again, one on one situation here, and he just beats the left guard clean. Unfortunately, he's not able to get the sack, but he frees up Rashawn to do so. So what you want to see here. Obviously, this is a rush to the left side, so you want him on the left guard. Uh, now you want Kalike on the right tackle. Uh, Rashawn on the right guard. Uh, the center, either on Hurst or Rashawn, whichever one he chooses, will be the anchor. Whichever one he does not will be the pass rusher. Fortunately for Michigan, the center doesn't choose one. So what this allows is both Rashawn and Hurst to get outside leverages on their blockers and win that snap. So this play is actually all on the center uh, for Michigan State. Now here, I know he's a defensive tackle, but he should be able to bend that at this particular point. Uh, like Rashawn is, you see Rashawn with that great bend of his. And he should be able to wrap him up. But again, from the block shot, or from the snap, through the tackle, he does everything exactly the way you want him to. Bam. Just great anchoring base. Got a little bit of penetration there. Uh, from the get-go, but he really held his own all the way through that play. Well done by Hurst. One with one tech here. Okay. And you see him on the... Okay, that was way too fast to see anything. Tried to the double team from 70. Nicely done. Because of that, again, we see Rashawn is that free rusher. So what you want to see from him here is you want Chase in the one-on-one -on, -one on his edge, Rashawn on the one-on-one -on, -one on his edge, and then either McCray or Hurst as the doubled. Uh, in this case, it's first because McCray drops, or at least spies, rather. Uh, so you get Rashawn on his one-on-one, -on -one, and he gets a great penetration here. Uh, Chase on his one-on-one, -on -one, he gets pretty decent depth. Uh, and then Hurst gets the double. 
Fortunately for her, she doesn't get tripled by the uh, Probably should have held a little bit closer to the middle here uh, to try and keep the tackle off of. Uh, but Rashawn does a fantastic job of disengaging on this block. Someone you keep an eye on in 2019 class. And uh, he just is able to pursue Lewerke. Forces the throw away. So, a very, very well executed play by Rashawn Gary there. Bam! Look at that burst and penetration from Mo Hurst. Again, short yardage, goal line, those types of things. Those are where he's going to make his money the best. Backed up inside their own one yard line. You see Mo Hurst. Bam! Other linemen haven't even locked their hand, or, or still have their hand in the dirt. And look how far back Mohurst is. He's in the end zone. Bam! Only guy to engage at this point still is Chase Wingovich. Neither is Sean or Furbush are engaged. By the time that Rashawn and Furbush are engaged, look how far Mohurst is. And not only that, he's being double teamed. Unreal. And then he attacks the third guy too. Fantastic penetration. And again you see it. Again you see it. Every single play in short yardage. There has not been one play backed up to his own end zone, the offense backed up to their end zone, or with less than three yards to go, where he has not gotten into the backfield. Not a single play in this tape. In those situations. I might they have a bit too much. Okay. Short yardage, man. Killing it. Bam, you just see that bursting explosion. Oh, right off the ball. Off the ball. Bam, look at that. Look at that burst in penetration. Again, just that leg drive, that power, that strength, but yet that acceleration burst explosion right off the ball. The quarterback hasn't even taken a step, and he's already a yard deep in the pocket. The linemen haven't even left their, their hand in the dirt yet. And look at that, he's already beating his block leaning, only two guys are engaged. Absolutely unreal. It tracks the double here. Still shakes that clean, clean, which allows Rashawn to make this play as a safety. Uh, they spawn just short. But look at what Mo Hurst is able to do on this play. Now they say he got out. Yeah, he did. Just barely, though. Just barely. And he just holds his anchor very well there. And Devin Bush, ugh. I want to see him disengage a little bit faster. Yeah, they're going to show us the other angle first. Yeah, he gets out. He still gets a little bit of a burst in penetration here. But for whatever reason, they're calling that to that right side. They really want to uh, uh, stop that run play. I guess that's the way to put it. They really want to stop that handoff and that whole defensive line. All four of them bit to that side. And the pressure is coming from that side. So ultimately, this play is on Devin, McCray, and Furbush to come up and make this, this play. Now, Furbush is in, in coverage here, ideally. McCray or Devin should be in coverage on this guy. And the other one should be a rusher. Now what happens is McCray, for whatever reason, is a very ridiculous way off from that guy, probably because he stinks. Uh, Furbush doesn't get a shovel coming up to take this, the shallow route there. Uh, long doesn't get a shovel getting back into man. So that leaves Devin as the rusher. Now as soon as Devin takes on that rusher role, it's his shot to get the safety. It's priority number one for him. 
It actually doesn't do too terrible a job of disengaging. Uh, that's actually more played by Lorki uh, to get Devin to get out of Devin's grasp there. Nice job, nice job fighting for those yards by Brian Lorki. Yeah, he just gets off that block, gets to the next one, he makes that tackle. Well done. Stops forward progress. Just getting deep into the pocket. He at one point had triple teamed. Yeah, got that pick. So fun. So let's go back here again just one more time and quickly go through this again. Just make sure that we didn't miss anything egregious. Again with the burst, I see it very, very clearly here. Rashawn chasing uh, over the interior. Looks like it might actually be Uche. Uh, don't even really have the And yeah, he's just getting pushed. He's four yards deep. Oh man, one of us had that. Okay, same time else. So here, uh, now this is one of those times you, you want to see him one on one, third down. You want to see him collapse that pocket and or get the pressure. And bam, look at that. As soon as I said that, he gets off the block and gets the pressure. Gets off the that rep. Very well done. Did his job on that play. Now, unfortunately, that's a fantastic play by Lewerke. Almost takes the first down. But Mohurst did everything he was going to get to there. Oh, man, just that bursting thing. Gap penetration. Jeez, and he forces the running back right into Devin Bush for a TFL. Beautiful, beautiful play. Now, let's watch this again. What's he doing here? Bam! Look at that! Look at that burst! Look at that mortar bursting explosion off the line. Chase is still in his stance. Mone is still in his stance. So Sean is just getting out of his stance. The other linebackers are still in their stances. The corners haven't even moved. The receivers haven't moved. The line is barely stood up. The quarterback isn't even out, out of center yet. The, the running back is still, he's already going for that block. That is insane. Look at the, none of the other blockers have even, even engaged outside of Monet. Unbelievable. And at this point, he's already three yards in. On the run play. Now because of that, and as well as a nice play by Chase here to seal that outside leverage. Moni here to hold his gap very nicely. This play has to go outside. And you know who's going to be right there on the outside? Right there at the at the line of scrimmage already. Mr. 10, Devin Bush. And that's exactly who makes that play. Along with Tyree. Bam. What Moe Hurst is able to do for a team defense is what makes him so special. While you like him in that Aaron Donald role, that Aaron Donald mold, whatever, that's not who he's going to be. He's not a superstar player. He's not a, a build your defensive line around me type of guy. What he is going to do is he is going to do his job and he's going to do it mighty fine. And he's going to be a guy where you pick him up, he is going to be a team defender who is versatile, able to be used uh, in multiple different ways to free up different playmakers on your defense. So, say a team like the Chargers needs a defensive tackle, right? You get Mo Hurst, his responsibility is going to be from day one, Mo, I want you to eat those double teams. And you know what? He's in free up uh, both selling Ingram off the edge. I want both selling Ingram one on one, both of them, one on one matchups, 90% of snaps that they see. 
and you know what's going to happen? Is Mo Hurst, well, he's not going to shed those double teams. Let's get that right here. That's not going to be his role, necessarily. He's not going to be able to shed those double teams and things like that, especially year one. It's still tech technical technique that needs to be refined if you want to see him do that. But what he's going to do, if he goes to a team like San or LA, sorry, Chargers LA, um, is he's going to be able to get both and Ingram in one-on-one -on -one situations from day one in Los Angeles. Or another team, my Lions. I'm a Lions fan. If you're going to come here and be a part of a Matt Patricia defense, you know what the first thing he's going to do is, is he's going to occupy that block, and when he gets his one-on-ones, Patricia will utilize him so that he gets his shot, he'll win. He'll win those one-on-one -one battles and he'll get penetration. Otherwise, he'll be ne right next to Ishan Robinson and Anthony Zyro, and you know what, he'll hold his anger. It'll be his job just, you know what, uh, Mo, don't give up any yardage. We don't want you getting pushed back at all. And you know what? That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to hold his anchor, hold his line of scrimmage, and that team is going to have to run right into Ishan Robinson, who is a very good run stopper in the making, or Anthony Zettel, who is a very good edge setter. Or, even better yet, if he's able to occupy a double team, or at the very least get some penetration here, you might even be able to see Jared Davis make some plays. And that's when you get to see some TFL, some big hits, some key moments, some momentum shifters. That's the type of team impact that Mo Hurst is going to bring to your team. Again, you don't want him on stunts. I will say this a million times over. While I worked on that play, you do not put Mo Hurst on a freaking stunt. Don't do it. He's not quick. He's not agile. He is not... While he's while he has bursts, he's not really a um, long term burst guy. He's more of a short spurt burst guy. You do not want him on a stunt, and even worse, you do not want him on the back end of a stunt. But then I mean, like there's generally the guy that takes the under, like like in this. Just pause this for a second so you guys can kind of understand where I'm coming with this. Like, think of a screen in basketball, right? Like, you go under the screen or over the screen. I feel like, um, I kind of use the same analogy with stunts. There's the guy who goes under and makes impact first, and then there's the guy that goes over and then takes the long way around and tries to get to the edge. You do not want Hurst to be the guy that goes over. If you're using Hurst as a stunt, uh, you want him to stunt with the one tech, and you want to use them both under. Or even better, if you're gonna use, if you have to use Hurst on a stunt, you rotate him with the five or the like the five, six, seven, your traditional end, uh, and you use the end on the over and get the end on the center, and then you get Hurst driving on the guard of the tackle, uh, and then counter back inside, like like that type of thing. If you absolutely must use Mo Hurst on a stunt, that's how you need to do it. He cannot be the over guy on a stunt. If you use Mo Hurst on stunts more than, I would say, 10% of the snaps, you might get a bust. In the second round, you might get a bust. He is not a stunter at all. And whatever team takes him, he's on day one. He's a guy who needs to hold his anchor, get penetration, collapse the pocket, uh, and really do his job. A little bit slow. Oh, that was Monet. This showed the wrong guy. My fault. It's actually Monet. You want to watch her son's play? He's actually the guy that gets off the block and makes the tackle. So nice shot by Mo. And again, what do I tell you guys? Third and short is exactly what happened there. This situation. What's he going to do? He's going to bull rush that right. He's going to get deep into the pocket, and he's going to bring Ryan Lewerke down for a TFL. Third and short, short yardage situations. He wins 90% of the time. It's Fourth down, 
and two. And look at this. Again, short yardage situations. Can't hammer that point home enough. He is winning almost every single time in short yardage. In fact, through the four or five games now that we've watched, he has not lost in less than three yards at his own end zone or at the opposing end zone. He just does not lose in short yardage. Every single play. This isn't a sometimes thing. This isn't an inconsistent thing. This is an every play thing. He's winging 90%, almost 100% of the time in less than three yards to go, third down, in short yardage. And bam! Look at that! Look at that play! Fourth and two, down by four in the fourth quarter. And look at who's right there to make that play. The senior leader of the Michigan defense, Maurice Hurst, with that extremely good ball get off, that extreme penetration right off the snap. Bam! Three RTF and two in the clutch. What more can you freaking want from a guy? That's not a sometimes play. Bam! Gets good penetration there. Three yards deep. Fortunately, the other guy, the other guy can't get off his block. Bam, gets that inside leverage on the guard. Look who's right there to make that run stuff. And again, less than three yards to go. Maurice Hurst wins. Every single time. Watch this one on one situation, less than three yards to go. And one with a 70 here. Look at that. He's just going to completely blow that play up from the get. 90% of the time. Third and three. Watch. I bet you Mohurst is going to make this play too. They actually have him lined up at oh, three tech here. Oh, they actually ring a shovel. Okay. A little bit different, but look at right that play. Oh, what a finish. What a finish from Maurice Hurst. Well, he doesn't actually make this play here. That's a nice play by Rashawn and McCray. Look at him just finish that play on 61. That slams him to the ground. Oh my goodness. What a dominant physical force. And again, they highlighted Monet. That's their fault. Uh, so let me find guys on this play. Uh, Mohurst is this guy right here. They're showing Monet. Uh, you want to actually watch Maurice Hurst right there. Okay, so not the best play there. Um, want to see him get a little bit further back, but there's not really much he can do on that play anyway. And to your guy. There, actually line up a one. No, no, two tech. Bam, nice push, and look at the bull rush! Oh man, that force back. Might have acted up a little too much. Actually, no, I didn't, because it's second and six. Look at this push! Oh my goodness, bull rush for Mo Hurst. Three yards back, disrupts the run play, forces a quarterback to keep it. And he walks right into Chase Winovich for a tackle for a loss. What great burst from Mohurst. And 60 tracks that double, gets Rashawn on the one on one. Unfortunately, Rashawn can't make the play. He barely misses the tackle. Devin's right there cleaning up. So again, the play worked out about as good as it should have. Nice push there from Hurst and that anchor. 
in this particular play, you're asking him to be that ink. Oh, I much. In this next play, you're asking him to be that anchor. Uh, and and right here, you're gonna watch him. He's gonna get that punctuation at first. That with that nice. Uh, but what you're really looking for here is you want him to stay where he's at. You do not get pushed back on this play. Period. Or you lose this rep. And look at what he's doing. He's standing his line right at the line of scrimmage. Beautiful. Very well executed play by him. Well. It's like, oh my goodness, again, Mo Hurst. It's actually like really quick here. Look at this. He hasn't even gotten the ball in his hands. And Mo Hurst is already jumping the snap. I think about the only snap that I've seen timed as well as that was uh, oh crap I pushed the button was Carol uh, had one good I forgot who it was against uh, but Cleveland Farrell had one really good snap uh, in a game where he had I think it was three sacks and he's not in this class. Oh crap, let me find where we were. Someone to find him, Mark. I believe it was the, it was the next play. But yeah, I mean, yeah, because this is where Rashawn misses the sack and then Wilhurst tries to disengage, but he, it's, like, it's just not quick enough uh, to play that kind of, kind of angle. And then we see the nice anchor play again. And it should be right here, where we left off. Right here, bam! One more time. One more time. Bam! Look at that! Look at that! He hasn't even taken a step. He's not out of his stance. He's still in his stance. He's even crouched. He's still in his stance. Still in his stance. Nice get off by Rashad there, to be fair. He had a nice get off there, too. But look at Mo already a yard deep, and he hasn't even taken it. And because of that, look at that leverage boost he has to the outside. Look at that play by Mo. And you know what? He's able to get around it, absolutely stuff the running back. What a fine play by Mo Hurst in the clutch. Three minutes to go down for There, now see, that was one of the very few instances where he had a big time ball get off. But you know what he does? He makes up for it by winning that one on one battle anyway. Now watch this. What we're going to see Mo do is we're going to see him take this to the inside. Uh, and really, he should actually be double teamed. What you're going to see here is he's just going to win the inside leverage on number 70. Realizes this, uses this to his advantage, also knows he has Rashawn to his right. And he just completely blows this play out from the inside. Now, what that does is that forces this play right back into Rashawn, who's engaged in one-on-one. -on -one. Kalik, who has outside leverage in one-on-one. -on -one. And Josh Metellus, who's free. So while he didn't actually make the tackle, he forced that run to the outside very, very well. And it frees Mattel and Gary up to make that that actual tackle. Well done by Hurst. Oh, slide him over. Okay. Caught me off for a And bam! Look at that! We're trying to chip him now. Shines him a little bit different. First time we've seen that. And unfortunately, it works. But look at that motor! Look at that motor! Oh, I love defensive line guys with motors. They don't give up on plays. 
They're going to chip him right here, right? Number 70. He's going to chip him from the start, right? Bam. He's on the ground. He's done. This play's over. It's Mo Hurst. This is Michigan defense. It's right back up in second and four. Fourth quarter, two minutes to go. The guy getting the tackle for loss. After getting knocked to the floor. What a play by motor recovering. Use that motor. And again, that burst triple teamed. There's three blockers there. And he's still four yards in the backfield before the quarterback even has the ball. And you know why? It's third and three. And even better yet, it's the fourth quarter two minutes to go in close game. And he has to fight the one. And you know what that allows for? It allows for him to tell us the fourth set. Bam. Now, unfortunately for Michigan, he fell on top of his uh, lineman, so he did actually get the first. But I don't know if there's anything more you could ask for Mo on that play. And bam, again! Again, people! How many times do you have to see this? This isn't a sometimes thing. No, uh No. Watch this again. Bam! Look at that! Look at that! Ball get off! Unbelievable. The center, uh, the guard is trying to, he's already freaking demolishing him. He's not even two steps out of the backfield. Gary and Chase aren't even engaged. Linebackers, safeties haven't even left in corners, haven't even left their stand. And he's already, now he's, they left him free because he was supposed to stunt. Look at this. He's already four yards back. And look at this even more. He's already five yards in He's already the quarterback when he's handing the ball off. Lewerke has to away and he falls. Then he misses the tackle, but right into um, Monet, and they get the clear tackle for a loss in, in the clutch. Bam! Mo Hurst again with that get off. Again. Again, you see him get pressure. Of course, it was his run. Off the run, so you're not going to see him follow Lewerke. At this point, that comes on, on Devin and uh, Tyree, who do their job. Bam! Again with the bursting explosion right off the ball. Again! It forces Lorky to run to the outside. Nate. Nothing. You gain a one. Fourth down, Michigan gets the ball back, and that's the end of the game because General Gordon's trash. But how many times can I say this? Short yardage, he wins day near every single snap. Third downs, he wins day near every single snap. Third and longs, he wins every sing day near every single snap. Every time, it's his job to get penetration, get in the backfield and wreck havoc, he's able to do so. Finally. One more, one more game for you guys. This one's really short. So, uh, for those of you guys still here, shout out to y'all. I uh, really appreciate you guys sticking with this. This is obviously a very long video at this point. Uh, but one more game to show you guys here. This is his bowl game versus South Carolina. Uh, he did make the decision that he was going to play for his team here. Uh, and his last year at Michigan, fifth year senior, wanted to give back to the program. It's given so much to him. Uh, and... He chose to play against South Carolina in the bowl game, risk himself for his body as Jeff Stock. Uh, fortunately for him, it actually worked out well. That in a minute here. So again, push, penetration. How many yards back is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six or seven yards back. Penetration. Bam, ball get off. Uses his straight, gets that hand up and knocks it down. What a play by Mo. Pumps him up, gets right back at it, ball get off, just completely demolishes the quarterback. On third and four. Granted, he wasn't touched. But watch this, he just completely ignores the guard. Goes right at the quarterback. He forces a terrible pass. And slams him. Huh. 
held, and he still gets his hand up. Nice job, those two plays in this game, of getting his hands up. Something he's added to his arsenal. And holding his anchor. Again, we talked about that in the first video. Holding his anchor on this play. Getting pushed back an inch. And because of that, they barely get a yard, if that, on first down. What a strong play by Hurst. Now, this play, again, his responsibility to win the outside there. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the play call. His role is here. He needs to try and stunt that outside guard, that right, right guard, and win to the inside. And then force it back out. But he does what he has to do. He got past his assignment. Bam, that ball got off. Kind of getting held there again. And then he gets doubled. Not much you can do about that. Third and three. Let's see what's here. Bam. Ball get off. Double team. Freeze up Khalid to get the deflection. Now again, while he didn't exactly make that play by himself, what he was able to do here is he's able to attract that double team, right? From that, that tackle and that guard. And because of that, Khalid's able to run free right off the edge, get his hands up, and get that key third down stop up six in the second quarter. Of the bowl game. That's the kind of team impact that Mohurst has for your team. Again, just get that Rashawn Gary, get Rashawn Gary free off the edge. That's a win. Dang, look at that push. Third and look at the look at this, fellas. Look at this. Third and one. Who else but Maurice Hurts to get penetration on third and one? Just oh that get off. I'll oh, back you up even more. Watch this play. Bam, look at that. Third and one. Point of impact, point of attack. Great. Strong bull rushes the guard. Just demolishes him. Oh, and then he makes that tackle to finish it off. Oh man, that's so much fun to watch. Third and one up six in your bowl game, and look at that. He just completely demolishes that guard, and makes that arm tackle. Granted, nice play by Kalik to be there and help him out a little bit, but still, man, unreal. Play there is to get that pursuit, or unfortunately it's not fast enough. Uh, but he does force that angle. Third and two. Third and two, right? Watch more on this play. Holds his anchor, and bam! Look at where the play ends. In front of Maurice Hurst, who finishes with slamming his guy to the ground. Let's watch that back. A little bit further. Watch this play. Bam! Right there. Point of attack. Alright. Three at the line. Wing from there. Wing from here. Anchor. Not moving an inch. But right here. Bam! That's where his impact is. Forces the running back. That's actually a really good play by Furbush as well. Definitely gonna point that out to get the actual tackle for a loss, but Mohurst just finishes off number 50. Beautiful. A little bit of gig off me there on second and six. Nice play. Went to that inside, shakes that block very nicely, and again gets that pass deflection. That's two on the day. Oh, that ball get off is nasty.
And this cover is by David Wallen. Find him with a nose. Oh man, what a play by Wenovich. Holy crap. Okay, we're not watching film on Chase, but like, let's just go back for a second and admire this. Watch what Chase Wenovich is able to do here. He just to demolishes the running back. And then Mohurst is right there for Bush misses the sack. But that play is all Chase, man. Nice job to him. Oh, whoops, I was watching the wrong guy. All right, well, uh, so right here, you're watching this guy here in the interview. Yeah. Oh, no, that's 93. That's not Mohurst. That's incorrect. Ignore that play. And in there, they completely got the wrong guy again. So that play was not Mo. That was not. I can see that clearly there. And then this play here, you're going to want to watch this guy here, the one close to the chase. Uh, the one that they actually highlight is Brian. Again, getting his hand up on that play. Nicely done. And it resulting in completion after a nice coverage by David Long. During Long, what do you expect him to do here? Win his one on one. And he actually occupied a triple team. Uh, so a little bit of a role change there. Uh, nonetheless, it still results in a nice interception. Great play by Kalik and uh, nice pick there by Furbush. Bam. Gang occupying a triple team. On that play. Oh, that's a replay of the INT. So not again, but... Oh, he just completely shut that block! Oh, man! What a play by Maurice Hurst! Oh, my goodness. Granted, again, shout out to Devin as well for taking that running back vision for him. Um, that's a great play by Mr. Devin Bush number 10. Uh, you're going to see him right here. But watch Mo Hurst. He's just going to completely swim move this right guard. And as a result, it has uh, Devin takes the running back, which frees up Mo for the interior and Chase for the exterior quarterback. Now watch this. Devin just takes the running back. Mo Hurst, Devin, and Chase now in the quarterback. Mo's the first guy there, forces an absolute terrible throw. Lucky his receiver even got hands on it, or caught it. Oh, they did a great job of chipping him there. I mean, that was a very quick throw. Okay, hold your own. Uh, okay, not as much as I'd like to see there, uh, though it did end up being a positive play from the defense. Oh, okay. Screen to the opposite side. Obviously not a fast guy. Nice play by Gary to chase that down, though. And again, what a play by Devin Bush, man. This kid is going to be a star next year in the NFL. Well, two years from now, next year in Michigan. And that ball got off an explosion from Hurst on this play again, man. Unbelievable. Oh, what a catch. Having been spy for whatever reason. Oh, it's during 17, that's why. It might have actually been zone coverage because he followed the receiver on that play. But either way, it was not a pass rusher. Now, there he is, and he almost shut the double team. In fact, he does shed the double team at the end, um, but Rashawn, no, Chase and McRae are already there. Finally, good play from McRae, by the way. Occupies the double team very nicely there, 
frees up Rashawn to make that play. Nicely done. And <laughs> he's still trying to go for the pick. Okay, occupies the double team to free Rashawn on the edge. Unfortunately, Rashawn, not enough bend on that play. Uh, forces McCray to make this tackle, which he actually does for a change again. So, good drive for Mike McCray. Shouts to him. Bam, he just drives that center. Oh my goodness. Too bad that gap wasn't held. But watch this play by Mo Hurst just absolutely dominating the center. Bam, you're going to see him the point of attack, and he just gets uh, leverage and balance on it. And he just completely drives him back uh, and gets a crush on the QB. Unfortunately, Monge was on the other side. Uh, on that play, and, and everyone else was way too far back on turn 11. Uh, I stopped it by Devin Bush, again, second team a few times. Oh my goodness, that got off from Hurst again. In fact, that you could actually argue that that forced that bad snap, too. Are you going to show me a replay? Nope. Let's go back and watch this again, then. A little bit more. Bam, he just explodes right there. And because that center hurries the snap, it's a bad snap. I can't control it. Falls between the quarterback and the running back, and it's an easy TFL for Kalik. That's Mo Hurst impact right there, man. Late in the fourth quarter. Down. Bull game. And again, man. Unbelievable. Clutch straight. Clutch straight. Bam, it's just gonna get that, that burst. Now watch here. This is point of attack, right? Watch his He's just gonna completely drive through with his lower body strength and completely bull rush the man and just walk right into the guard or walk right into the running back. What a play by Hurst. Goes unblocked. Oh, it just misses the dive tackle. Oh, what a block by 61. Dang. But third and 16, he forces that play to the outside. So, what have we learned from this film session? Maurice Hurst can rush the passer. Maurice Hurst can run stop. Mo Hurst can play all three downs. Mo Hurst can play in both short and long yardage situations. And most importantly, Mo Hurst has a motor. Also, didn't commit any penalties. We watched five games. Hasn't committed any, there's actually six now, uh, now that they were through the South Carolina tape. We watched six games, hasn't committed a single penalty. Uh, and of course, he is very well known for his leadership and, and all that. Uh, so, but thanks for the first video. So, again, guys, hopefully you learned something in this one. Uh, this was a fantastic watch for me. I love this. Uh, definitely a very, very fun uh, entertaining experience for me. Uh, and yeah, so with that, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one just as much as I did. Thanks for stopping by Prospect Central 101. Uh, sorry for the length of the video, guys, but I mean, this was just too, too fun. Yeah, you have to admit, this was great. Uh, so again, uh, hopefully you guys learned something from this one, and we'll see you back again soon. Peace out.